Hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here and welcome back to another episode of the Daily Crypto News. And today, a lot of stuff is going on in crypto. So I would say sit around, stay tuned. Because even though I am right now in Singapore attending the Token 2049 event, a lot is going on in the background and there's a lot of stuff you guys need to know about. First of all, let me say, if you think that things might get a lot crazier from here on out, you might actually not be that far from the truth. There are more and more articles coming out about the crazy, crazy, absolutely crazy state of either the US dollar or the Great British Pound. And there's also this funny little notion that people in crypto have specifically that, well, even though a lot of these financial markets are down a ton, you know, Bitcoin is down, the stock market is down, and a lot of other things are down right now, people are thinking that things are gonna get a lot more worse. And the strange part about that is, is the more people that think it might go worse, usually the worse it gets. But then if you compare it to going to a store, for example, if right now you wanted to go buy something in a store and you got yourself like a 50% discount or so, I think you'd be ridiculously happy. I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that you know you want this, you're gonna buy it anyway. And so the fact you're right now getting a 50% discount on whatever you needed to have, so to speak, well, either it, it, it inclines you to buy it like now instead of not doing it, but most importantly, you'd be very happy with the opportunity to do so. Yet in financial markets, very often it's quite different. Okay, I have to take a quick stop because I don't think this is equal and this is bothering the living hell out of me. And also guys, it is right now, I think like 4 a.m., 4.30 a.m. or something. But look at the setup, you know, I have like a big screen right there and my little MacBook right there. It's, uh, it's a pretty interesting one, you know. In terms of crypto market overview, things are actually doing quite okay today. Coins like XRP are not up a ton, but coins like Bitcoin are up a little bit, slightly below $20,000 at 19.5, and the entire crypto market is actually up 1.3% as well today. A couple of coins that were hot today, Cardano had a couple of different pieces of news that I noticed. It's getting in the news mostly for uh, partially the blasting of Ethereum that they've done and partially, I guess, the interest that Cardano's Charles Hoskinson sees in the project over time from, for example, VCs. There's an article right here which reads, Hoskinson anticipates flood of VC money coming for Cardano by 2024. And he says the lag of Ponzinomics has VC presently looking elsewhere. However, as Cardano's DApp ecosystem takes off, Hoskinson sees VC money coming in rapidly. He basically says, and this is actually a really nice point, right? Well, it was a fair distribution for Cardano and they don't really have any crazy insider dumping that can happen from a VC perspective. He's, for example, given, I believe, the EOS as an example, who, again, not gonna lie, I actually made a lot of videos about in the past because the ICO at the point, still the biggest, by the way, ever, was a really big deal. But as of currently, EOS is not really doing too much. I just saw them over right here in Singapore at the Token 29, uh, 249 booth. I uh, didn't say hi, actually, but I did see them. I kind of wonder how they're doing, even though I don't really care too much anymore. Charles is also kind of explaining, like, EOS, big dumps, you know? Big institutions bought a ton, and they're dumping on everybody. It was just downhill from the get-go, where the big institutions make money on the small retail holders. Cardano, egalitarian, I believe what they say, um, egalitarian yeah, distribution, so no such opportunities exist for crazy dumping, leading to the project being overlooked by VCs because, well, a lot of these VCs, they just look for short-term profits. With Cardano, they don't really have any, like, uh, like a lot of Algorand and Solana type of projects have with crazy, crazy unlocks by big VCs. And so it basically says that that gives another bit of appeal, I guess, for Cardano. If you're into the Ripple lawsuit, this is surely something for you. One of the things that's going on right now a lot is speculation that they're going to win and absolutely rip. So just to quickly get you guys in on the scoop, nothing crazy happened over the last like 24, 48 hours or so. We can see one little post by Ripple that says, CEO Brad Garlinghouse joined CNBC Crypto World to recap the latest in the SEC v. Ripple lawsuit, recent US regulatory action, and what's next for Ripple's growth plans. Check out the few interview here. So yeah, honestly, as you guys know, I'm a pretty big fan of Ripple and what they claim or say, sorry, say, what they aim to achieve. I would say I'm pretty excited, I guess, about the process. I actually just went over to the Ripple booth to ask if it's even possible to eventually get some sort of interview going. I'm not sure exactly how difficult it's going to be. And if you're wondering, no, I've never spoken to any Ripple employee really outside of the two events that I've been to where they were. And no, they did not recognize me. They did not know who I am. I don't know who any of them are. So it's not, you know any connections like that. But it was nice to say hi and just kind of see how they're doing, you know? Even though, honestly, it's also a question of, well, let's say you go to Ripple Booth. It's mostly Ripple X that's there. They're trying to fund new Ripple-related, or should I say, XRP-related projects, really, or XRP-ledger-related projects. But I don't really have that much to offer them. 
you know, I can help with exposure to some degree if XRP ledger based projects want to get out there, for example, maybe because, well, a lot of people on the channel like XRP a lot. But, you know, from them as a venture arm, not exactly sure how exactly I can help them, you know. Then again, in terms of the lawsuit, things are doing pretty good for them. You know, honestly, I've been checking this lawsuit out for such a long while. And I actually had a fun discussion today with Chris, MM Crypto and Moon Call because they're thinking as well about this lawsuit and how it's going to affect the price. So one of the guys actually that was there was also speculating, saying, well, most likely the result of this lawsuit is already priced in. The majority of people think they're going to win, so it's priced in. And they say it's most likely not going to pump afterwards. And I, I really sat down, thought for a second, and thought, well, I think you're wrong. But maybe I'm biased because I'm looking into XRP and Ripple so much that I'm so engulfed in this process of the lawsuit and the financial system that they're trying to basically revamp that I'm not seeing it from an outside perspective of, well, maybe that's where the price pumped so much. Funny that they mentioned that XRP looks like a stable coin, which again, I can partially agree with because XRP obviously has not had the best performance over the last couple of years, uh, which is a lot of people are so surprised that I still talk about it, for example, I've been talking about it for so many years. But in my opinion, there's absolutely no way that it's fully priced in because there's a risk factor. So usually we have these buy the rumors, sell the news events. When there's, for example, a, let me actually go to big screen here. When there's some sort of buy the rumors, sell the news type of event, there's like a, let's say a hard fork or some sort of upgrade that everybody knows is gonna happen. The majority of people know the result of that and the majority of people know whether or not it's gonna be good or bad, basically. You have a good idea and so you buy in anticipation of this event continuing on. With Ripple, I would say that even though we are pretty convinced as XRP holders, as the community, that they're going to win. The majority of people looking at it still are doubtful. And so some might put a speculatory bag in sight with the anticipation that they might win. But that's the key right there. Might win. And again, that's the key right there. Again, might maybe do well. People are still very cautious. And that's also what you're seeing on Twitter and whatnot, that a lot of people are still not supportive of it, which I think will change mostly when they get some sort of positive um, conclusion in this lawsuit, which I think will come. But that brings me to the point, I don't think it's priced in and I still honestly think that the moment that the lawsuit is over, it's going to do exceedingly well. But now before we move on guys, I got to tell you about some of my friends. Now I've actually over the last couple of years met a lot of people in crypto, it's actually absolutely wild. But sometimes you meet guys and you're like, you guys do good business, you know, you guys have good stuff. Whoa, my recordings do some crazy stuff. This has happened more and more often. I just want to say, I uh, met some nice people a little while ago. This project I've known for a couple of months. It's called Winky Furs. I'm not sure if I just said it or not or if it's cut out. But basically, French Project had a very, very successful ICO a little while ago. Biggest one in France, I think $24 million that they raised. They're basically going to have themselves a new sale. What is that, you might wonder? Rightfully so, rightfully so. But you can check it right out in front of us over on winkyfirst.io. They have themselves a nice little land. And you guys know how I work, right? I only get myself into crypto land if I know the people behind it. And I know that it's actually going to have some sort of use or it's going to be rather important or just a generally good buy, basically. But yeah. Man, my recording is so messed up today. So I'm a little bit sorry about that, guys. But basically, Winkyverse, like I already explained to you guys a little bit ago, somewhere in the past, is an education platform. But it's a little bit deeper than that. It's the first educational gaming metaverse. And honestly, for that reason, I'm thinking, well, the land is going to be an extremely important part in this. But the way that they defined it and the way that I'm hearing it, it's such a revolutionary concept, you know? Whenever you have education, you want it to be connected to gaming in some way, shape, or form. But to then connect it again to a metaverse, it's a very nice idea, I think. It's obviously also backed by some of the best behemoths in the space, uh, co-founder of Sandbox. And you guys all know how well Sandbox has done over the past. We talked about it a ton. Uh, also the co-founder of Ultra. Yeah, and so basically tomorrow this pre-sale for the land is going to start or the actual sale. Not a thousand percent sure on that one. Just check it out with the link down below, to be honest, and you'd read everything about it. But it's going to be in, I guess, different forms of land in the gaming educational metaverse world. For the first couple of days, though, there's a 50% discount, but only people with a winky bot NFT can actually buy it. We talked about it before, so before though guys what's going on no but actually in reality guys i really like these people and i don't say that often so how much later am i gonna get it's always a difficult one you know because i got myself some nfts so of course it's already 50 percent cheaper and i did not know this at first but it's good to know now there's actually a five percent cash back in their native currency wink or wnk basically if you use the code that it says over on the top left so it's going to be 9BLKNQ. And I didn't even know this. And if you ask yourself, what does the land do? You have own to earn. But 
actually, I think you have a lot of different things. You can obviously just use it as a normal metaverse piece. So either invite people over, you know, build your own plot out, but also from a different realm, it's mostly focused on content. And obviously that's where I fall in. Even though I wouldn't say my focus is on educational content, it's basically allowing you to host and monetize user generated content as a whole. Now, a little side note, there's going to be two different sorts of land. You have the normal land, which I think is going to be 100,000 wink basically for the people that have an NFT, then 200,000 for people that don't. There's also legendary land, which at the start is 1.25 million wink, and then eventually 2.5 million wink. It has a couple of different features that I think are pretty cool. Obviously it's the logical stuff, you know, a better location, a better yield on your plot of land, teleportation feature, and I think another small couple of passive income pieces. And if you're wondering why I keep looking to the left, I can see that every like couple of seconds, my recording just stops automatically. And I have to like keep up with pressing the button. Maybe it's because the laptop is overheating, you know? So if you keep looking at me like, why are you looking like this? It's crazy, I know, but it is what it is, man. I have to keep like, <laughs> it's crazy. However, to get back to one of the points at hand, it's like the US has been going for a little bit of a war on crypto. And honestly, it's been pretty interesting to watch as we obviously know that the US cannot really win this war. Whenever you're talking about a crypto war, it's always a situation of, well, they either allow it or they don't. And if they don't, they're gonna miss out on all this crypto innovation. So as far as I believe, the majority of these guys do not want to miss out um, in terms of like different bodies of the world, like the US, you, of course you have Europe, you know, all these entities basically. None of them really want to miss out over longer periods of time. On the short term though, they can be really strong, really sturdy. They can say like, no, we don't want to this, that, 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 that because of these reasons. But over the longer term, we start to notice, well, it's all garbage. And that brings me back to the whole Ripple XRP argument from a little bit earlier. It's like, well, they can say that they're really hesitant. They can say that things are really doing bad, so to speak, and that, well, you have to watch out, you shouldn't go for it. Or right now, like we're seeing with the SEC saying it's a security, but all this stuff will be figured out eventually. And same thing kind of goes for Cardano. People notice things over time. So even though things might take a little while and things might get worse in the, in the meantime, you know, in terms of lawsuits, things might get a whole lot worse. In terms of regulation, things might get a whole lot worse. In terms of price, the US dollar might rise more, even though inflation is just absolutely wrecking us. While at the same time, the entire financial system is just collapsing piece by piece. It's all possible. At the end of the day, though, if you look at it from a, let's say, five-year perspective, everything will become back into balance, basically. Everything is always balanced. Whenever it's unbalanced, it balances itself out rather quickly again. And I'm personally very convinced that if you just take the time, you just take the time to sit down, relax, and grab yourself a beverage, basically, that everything will just be fine. And almost any crypto that we go for are going to be awesome. Again, I usually make some smaller list, for example, over on Twitter, where we talk about what my different cryptos are, which ones I think are worth to hold. But really, there are so ridiculously many cryptos that have such great potential, and it's actually pretty hard to pinpoint one specific list of, okay, this one, that one, this one, those are juicy or good. I like those ISO coins, but then again, I'm usually pretty bullish about the decentralized exchange coins as well, or actually the centralized exchange coins, the centralized ones are pretty good. Then again, from a different realm, I like a lot of layer two coins. It's like, well, I think it's just important to kind of diversify into different areas because you never know which sector is going to pop off next time, you know? For example, the last big bull run was a lot of DeFi season. Maybe the next bull run will be a lot of like gaming tokens. Who knows, right? And what if that was like literally not your sector? You had zero dollars in that sector. You know, it's worth it to maybe consider looking into it and maybe getting yourself a little allocation. But guys, we'll talk about that way more later. I'm noticing the video is not doing so well in terms of I'm messing up a couple of different settings, a couple of different pause things, and things are doing really strange. So I'm going to kind of cut it short here, guys. Sorry for that. I had a couple of cool topics. My video is going to be huge, but I guess we'll keep up and... Uh, do it tomorrow. You know, I have a couple of cool pieces coming up. So stick around to the channel, guys, and tomorrow will be a way better video with a lot of cool stuff. Stick around. See you guys again in another one. Uh, hopefully, we're still informative. Let's see.